Hi, I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge and welcome to Story Therapy. Why it works and how to do it with your clients. Setting a client free with the power of metaphor. The right story at the right time can facilitate psychological and even physical healing. It's possible that the ancient traditions of storytelling so rich and rife in all cultures may have been the earliest form of psychotherapy, as well as vehicles for passing on patterns of wisdom. See reference one below this video. So using story therapy isn't new, but it's becoming more popular again. Dr. Milton Erickson used to tell his patients stories from his own and other people's lives, as would the late great family therapist Virginia Satir. So why does story therapy work? Stories bypass the shredding effects of over-analysis and conscious reasoning. Stories are inherently hypnotic in that they fixate attention and appeal to the imagination. This makes story therapy the perfect device for delivering fresh patterns of hope as well as more specific suggestions for change for the client. How story therapy got rid of a boy's warts. The unconscious mind deals in patterns. My father, also a therapist, used the pattern of blocking the food supply of an invading army in a story he told to a boy covered in warts. This mirrored the pattern of blocking the blood supply to the warts. Neither warts nor blood were mentioned in the story, but the boy's warts began to disappear miraculously soon after he heard this story bearing in mind that his feet have been covered in them. Stories are not meant to be consciously picked apart. You don't have to know exactly how a medication works in order for it to take effect and help you heal from within. And if a story doesn't immediately work for someone, no harm is done. They've simply heard an entertaining and absorbing, perhaps relaxing story. But how do you create stories for change that fit your client's situation or the patterns of their situation. Number one, read, listen and learn stories. So plunder the world's rich treasure trove of stories. They say there are only seven plots and all the differences between stories are in the details. This is also true of human problems. There aren't that many different problem patterns that people experience and many of the apparent differences are just matters of detail, so people get depressed in the same way, but perhaps about different things. So read, listen, and also memorize stories, and lots of them. Think about the different problem patterns different stories address. Practice telling them and making them part of who you are, and you'll always find a willing audience in children when you want to practice storytelling. I've built up a library of stories in my mind to fit the pattern of just about every human problem, from addiction and depression to divorce and grief. And there are plenty of great books on stories and storytelling as well. Among them I recommend therapist Rob Parkinson's Transforming Tales, see reference one below the video, and world-famous storyteller Idris Shah's great corpus of traditional stories, World Tales, and check out reference too. Then there's our own, frankly, fantastic storytelling trainer CD. So a great story seldom has just one point or punchline. It will contain many layers of meaning. Reading and listening to stories develops creativity and is a fun way to improve your therapy skills. After all, what do we therapists do but deal directly in human stories or human narratives? Two, learn the story pattern not just the content. So to match a story to the needs of an individual, you have to look at the wider pattern of their life and seek a story that fits that pattern. Clients often uh, deluge you with so much detail that if you don't make a conscious effort, you can lose sight of the bigger pattern of what's going on. When sitting with clients, I'll often ask myself repeatedly, what's really going on here? What's the pattern here, the bigger pattern? Many traditional fairy tales match common life patterns, such as disadvantaged childhoods, appearance of benign help from outside later in the story, overcoming seemingly impossible obstacles, personal qualities, flourishing because of rather than despite disadvantages. 
It's a powerful message right there. For survivors of abuse, I might tell a tale such as the uh, Aquaquin Cinderella, see reference three to powerful effect. So three, make your stories hypnotic. A great storyteller is a natural hypnotist. He or she will be able to transport you to other times and places. You'll forget about time passing, your surroundings will gently fade from awareness, and you'll submerge into a world of difficulties, betrayal, hardships, adventure, wisdom, hope, and triumph. All the things that call forth the best from people, such as courage, persistence, daring, and true friendship in hard times. Hypnotic language communicates to all the senses. So when you tell a story, describe these sounds, sensations, smells, tastes, and sights as fully and vividly as you can. For example, compare the sun shone on the lake, that sentence, to a bright golden sun blazed in the deep blue sky, drawing a shimmering haze like an exotic, gauzy veil up out of the deep dark waters of the lake. Vivid descriptions fully engage your listener and make the story an experience, almost like a dream that they live through. If you've not yet used story therapy in your practice, it can feel a bit strange at first, but it won't be long before it'll start to feel like the most natural thing in the world, which of course it is. So I hope you found that useful, and if you did, please hit like and subscribe. And if you want to hear when my next video is published, hit the notification bell below this video. I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge, and if you'd like to subscribe to my email newsletter, you can find it over at unk.com blog. That's unk.com blog. And thanks for watching.